Okay, we're going to take a look at using a derivative to help you build a tangent line. Uh, remember, a tangent line is a good visual representation of the slope of this curvy function at whatever point you care about. Uh, we're going to use tangent lines for a lot of things in calculus. And the good news for us is it's really an algebra skill. You already know how to do it, but let's make sure you know how to mesh that with calculus. So one thing to keep in mind as we go through this is in Algebra 1, every time you needed to build a line, you needed a point and you needed a slope to get that equation of the line. So we're going to use the same idea here. We're going to start off, um, as we always do in the beginning of calculus, using something that will use the power rule. Um, once you learn a lot more derivative rules, we'll be doing the same thing with much more complicated equations. So here's uh, something. It's going to kind of look like a parabola opening upward, and we want the tangent line at x equals 2. So according to our algebra upbringing, we need a point and a slope. So let's think about the point. To get the point at x equals 2, you just literally plug a 2 into this equation but be careful with your symbolism. y of 2 is how you need to write that. That means I'm plugging a 2 into equation y, and I get out a 17. You've been doing that since probably 6th or 7th grade. So there is my point, 2 comma 17. But in algebra, I need not just a point, but I also need a slope to build the equation of a line. So now that you're in calculus, you can get the slope of a curvy graph by using the derivative. So I take this equation and I write down its derivative and this is the general formula for the derivative y prime of x. I specifically want to know the slope at x equals 2 so I plug in a 2. Notice the difference in the symbolism. I plug in a 2 into this derivative equation I get out an 18. So this is the only part on here that I'm doing any calculus. This was Algebra 1, this was Calculus. Now that I have my point and my slope, I'm still in the world of Algebra 1. I highly, 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 highly recommend you use this form. Uh, this is point-slope form. And do yourself a favor and write it out right away. y minus y equals m x minus x. And now you can plug in your y value, your slope value, and your x value. And you can be done on an AP test. That is a good enough answer. You don't have to convert that into a more usable form. So you can stop right there. But a lot of times you need to take that tangent line equation and do more stuff. So I've went ahead and converted to your friendly y equals mx plus b, the equation that you guys love. So this is the equation of the tangent line to that thing at x equals 2. Pretty straightforward stuff. This one's pretty tough to visualize, so I'm going to choose even a simpler example so we can visualize it. So that's coming up here. Okay. Having some technical difficulties. I think that works. Or do I? Here we go. So I have a much easier equation now. y equals x squared plus 4. We know that's a parabola opening upwards. y-intercept of 4. And we want the tangent line at x equals 1, but we're adding an extra step. We want to find the x-intercept of that tangent line. So it's just an, an additional algebra step. Before we worry about the x-intercept, let's get the tangent line. To get the tangent line for an equation, I need a point and a slope. So I use this equation to plug in an x equals 1, get out a y equals 5, and now I know the point 1 comma 5 is on that equation. Now I need the slope. Well, the slope is a calculus thing, so I need the derivative of that. It's y prime equals 2x. 
I need the slope at x equals 1, so now I need y prime of 1. That means I have to plug in a 1 and get out a slope of 2. Algebra or pre-algebra right here. Calculus right here. Now that I have my point and my slope, which I always need on, the, on building a tangent line, I can plug it into this point-slope equation. I could stop right here. It's totally fine. But to find the x-intercept, I think I want a better form of that equation. So I rearrange this into y equals mx plus b. Now that's also the form of the tangent line, but I want the x-intercept. And according to my algebra upbringing, every x-intercept in the entire world has a y value of 0. So I take my equation and I substitute a 0 for y, and I solve for x get an x equals negative 1 and 1 half. So we believe the tangent line to this equation has an x-intercept of negative 1 and 1 half. Since I chose such user-friendly, such a user-friendly scenario, we can visualize that. I take this graph x squared plus 4, and I just do a rough sketch over here. Parabola opening upwards, y-intercept is 4. I do a tangent line at x equals 1, so that's approximately x equals 1. So there's my proximate tangent line, which, by the way, that's reasonably accurate to that. And we were asking for the x-intercept. Well, sure enough, that tangent line, if I follow along until I hit the x-axis, there's the x-intercept, which is reasonably close to negative 1 and 1 half. So what I'm seeing here is a visualization of all the algebra I've done here, and it confirms my answer as being pretty darn reasonable. All right, that's building a tangent line. This is secretly hidden behind many, many, many items in calculus. Um, so become really good at doing this. Catch you later.